Just Lady Ada. Hey everybody, and welcome to my desk. It's me, Lady Ada. Got my hair did. Last weekend we were out visiting family, but we're back. Um, and back to hacking on electronics. Uh, do we have any news or updates, Mr. Lee? Yeah, regular shows this week and more. Tons of new products. Uh, lots of surprises. Big week for us. Also having some visitors in town, so maybe we'll have some extra content. It is a good week. Okay. All right, let's kick it. So, um, two weeks since two weekends ago, wow, it feels like it was months, but two weekends ago, I was still working on the Teddy Ruxpin hacking, trying to get audio working. I think we had gotten the the eyes modified using our Ruxpin analyzer script, but I was still working on getting the audio working, which was like kind of complicated. Um, and then, not this Wednesday, but the ten days ago Wednesday um, is when I got the audio working in the morning, and I don't see which version this is. So um, now, let's see this. Let's so now I've got it uh, playing custom audio. Um, so that's a a song icky sticky bubble gum that uh our ada kiddo likes to listen to so that would be funny if we load it on the bear it's just kind of you know very fast encoding um that just shows that you can actually um get audio encoded and working on here and that was um a long process i think last week i was talking about how sorry two weekends ago i was working on running um this library file on a raspberry pi and it wasn't running and so i was using ghidra to de decompile it and like try to change this uh flag and then you know the audio that came out of it um i'll look at it again but at the time i wasn't able to get it to play on the bear like it came out all like squiggly and weird um I'm still trying to figure out why some encoder libraries are working and some aren't but um i kept you know i wasn't willing to give up foolishly or not um, so I kept Googling around and, um, I ended up, uh, you go to the computer, I'll show what I ended up finding. So a lot of like, uh, reverse engineering is like, you just keep searching for stuff. Um, so, you know, searching and searching, you know, and I have this notes file even of like all the stuff I tried and like, I tried this library and that library and like decompile on this, decompile on that. And in the end, what I found was there was in a repository that the sdk repository for the sonics chipset had a zip file and in the zip file there was a library a different library file for android um and that file i googled around for it's called lib audio 32 encoder.so and it was a java library for android um and what's fascinating is uh we actually have an android developer on you know on staff on contract um antonio he's written the android um applications that we use for like bluefruit connect and PyLeap and all that stuff and i gave him that zip file with the the java library and i said hey can you like figure out if you can get this to um you know there's a function like audio and code can you like try encoding the audio and and he did and he actually when i try again it tried putting it on the bear it didn't work um and so we were like kind of annoyed and it was like why isn't it working it's like it's a sonics sdk this is a sonics chipset why is it working but when i searched github for this file the lib audio 32 encoder i came up with it came up this um github repo and um I was like, oh, cloud pets. And then it was like hacking unicorns. And it was like some, um, so the, the blog post doesn't exist. Um, but if you Google, like, a, you know, the, the, he, this guy worked for a company that was in bought by Accenture. So like good, goody for him. Um, but, uh, you know, I wanted to see what the original article was and it was, it was all kind of, you know, similar. I was like, okay, there's this toy. Uh, and it uses like the Sonic sound processor um, 
So that's good. And it has a, a Nordic NRF, which is actually similar, right? Remember, we we looked at the bear inside either on Desk Gladiator or um, in My Little Hacker. And we saw that um, it had the Sonic ships and NRF. So I was like, okay, maybe it's the same company that that did it. And then Sky's like, did this Bluetooth stuff, blah, blah, blah. And then um, you have very similar like uh, commands that were sent, but I don't really care about the Bluetooth stuff. But then um, somewhere down here, he's like, he's like, oh, there is this codec. And, um, you know, much like everybody else, like, you know, my, my entire life is people being like, hey, it's the G7221 NXC codec. Why don't you just use the G7221.1 NXC codec? And it's not. It's it's not exactly the same. I tried the standard codec and the codec. I mean, I, I'll keep looking at the codec now that I've gotten something working, but it's not the exact codec. But he did um, open up the Android app for Cloud Pets. If you go to, like, uh, Google research for uh, Cloud Pets APK, um, there's these like APK um, download, you know, like the archive sites and they kind of, they, they store every APK and you can download an APK. Um, so this is the Android app that originally was for this, this toy. Um, and then, hold on. I don't think I actually downloaded it. Okay. So now I download, so it's really big. So, um, an APK with the Android app that's running on, the, to, I guess with this other toy, this magical unicorn with Bluetooth, you record the audio on the Android app. You say like, hi, I'm a little unicorn. And you press go and it encodes it into this audio 32 codec, sends it over Bluetooth low energy. It's compressed. So it's, you know, the codec is a compression codec. Um, it'll save you, you know, 75%. It'll do like a 25% you know, compression. And, um, then the device will play that audio, you know, the toy will play the audio clip. So what you realize is that when you open up the XAPK or the APK, inside is a Android um, linked library called lib audio32 encode. And if you're on Android and you're, you're running Python on Android, which, you know, it's just Linux, so you can run Android on it. Um, so I'll show this in the folder. So this is the Cloud Pets app. And then if you rename this zip, because they're just zips, and I've already downloaded it before, so it's like, you've already done that. Um, there's another APK. So you can download the second APK. There's like an APK inside the APK. And then you rename this zip. And then in here is um, library files. So, um, the library files uh, in here, so there's like, you know, there's, and there isn't x86, unfortunately. There's only ARM ABY, ABI, and ARM ABI V7A, so two ARM cores. So this um, library is an encoder that will let you encode audio into um, the correct format. And so this person, PD, PDJ Stone, um, wrote an encoding script. A Python script that opens this DLL in Python. It's a, it's a C types DLL. And then what was really nice was like, oh, hey, look, there's that AU. Like, that's familiar. And the sample rate, okay, like all of this header like looks correct. So I was kind of getting excited because I was like, ooh, this seems like it's the correct um, encoder. Like, there's apparently a couple things called Audio 32, but maybe this is the right one. Um, so then the, the trick was this was written seven years ago. And um, so I was like really excited. I was like, okay, I'm going to like, you know, I had a Raspberry Pi and I saw Android on it. There's um, a version of, of Android uh, called, um, hold on, all these links, uh, Lineage OS. I install Lineage OS and I'm like booting my Raspberry Pi and I'm like, I'm like ready to, you know, I install Python on the Arduino, I'm uh, sorry, the uh, Raspberry Pi running Android. And it doesn't work because um, what happens is, you know, and this is like how you install it and you're like, okay, my Android, my floor, and I run it and you end up getting this error, which is, sorry, I'm in the editor mode, that 
it has text relocations and you can't run it on anything before sorry after apk the uh, api level 23. so basically this when this person wrote this bluetooth toy hacking script uh, and that app was written it was for android 5. it was like a very early or, or version of android and you're not permitted to run that code anymore on modern android and there's no like workaround it's like deep inside the operating system will not let you run it and so i did um you know and i, I talked about this in the video i you know i got a nexus 7 because like everyone has a nexus 7 and the nexus 7 can run android 5. and like i still have like an, an, a nexus 7 i have two i have one of each edition i think and I did get it running. I charged it, a factory reset it. I ADB'd in. I installed Termux, which is the you know Linux for Android. And thankfully, Termux has a version they still publish for Android five. And then I was able to like log in, and then I was able to ADB the files over. And through the um, command line, I was able to run the script. And it it complains. It says like, hey, it has text relocations this is wasting time then it's security and it's a bad idea but the code runs and it generated a bin file i took that bin file i pasted it into an existing story file for the the bear and then i put on the bear and it worked and so that was like magical so the only thing was is that like you have to have a nexus 7 and you have to go through this ordeal and like like nexus 7s are not like fast android machines like you know, even running the stock Android that it came with, you're like clicking and then you're like, I'm waiting patiently. And then you click again and then you have to take a deep breath because it's extremely slow. Um, there's a reason they gave them away. I don't think anyone bought a Nexus 7. So what I've been doing since then, and now I can encode audio. Um, so it's like we can encode audio. The rest of the file is, is parsable. The eyes can be modified. So what we want to do next is two things. One, make it so you don't need a nexus 7 to do this encoding because even though everyone has one i mean i, I talked to some people on my team and they're like i threw mine into the ocean and i'm like well okay cool or they lost it or they threw it away which you're not supposed to do you're supposed to keep it because you can't get to sanctuary unless you have your nexus 7 when you die um so the next trick is how can i get it so you don't need a nexus 7 so i've been documenting this as an unpublished guide um but the next step is that you can run android 5 on a Raspi 2. Um, there is a build available that you can download and I have like an image file that you can use and you can ADB into your Raspberry Pi on your desktop um, and run it. And that worked also. Like it, wasn't, it actually wasn't too bad. It wasn't very slow at all. Um, and you can get the files on and off and you can do the encoding and, and all the mark table stuff. But the problem is that Android um five wasn't available for the pi three or pi four like for whatever reason it was only built for the pi two and you can't it's the kernel is like pi two kernel um so then i tried a android five one emulator through the um android sdk and turns out that really sucks also like you can emulate arm 32 but it's like even more painful than uh the nexus 7 it just takes minutes to get anything done so um that was not a good solution but then you know, I kind of like put this bug into Antonio's ear, our, you know, Android developer. And he was like suddenly like, this is really interesting. Like, okay, like, how do you, how are we going to get this working? And he realized that if you look at the um, author of Clacod Pets app, Spiral Toys, and actually I kind of took screenshots, so I'll just do this. So they made um, this app called Cloud Free. Cloud Pets Free and this thing called Toy Fight. This is actually interesting. This company, like I read about it, and they like they kept changing their name. And like they were totally like going to make like the future of toys, and then like they went out of business. Um, and then this Wiggy Toy app is like some weird Bitcoin thing. Um, anyways, but they did the Cloud Pets app, and that was again only Android 5 compatible because the um library was very old, because it was like about 2018 or 2015. And they never, this didn't get updated. Um, and then they formed another company. And they made another toy called like the Wiggy, um, Wiggy Bank. And this also, it's like, look at this like scary ass toy. Uh, so this, this toy also 
you would like you could send it audio over Bluetooth. And so Antonio was like, oh, maybe like this other app, the Wiggy toy app has is more modern it's from 2020. So he downloaded the APK and opened it up and realized that there was a post API 23 version of the dot um, SO files. So now what I've got on here on my desk, which I'll show on the overhead somehow. Hold on, there's pieces. I'll, then I'll wrap up this because there's been gone off a bit. Um, there is, this is my, uh, this SCP was running CircuitPython, but it's no longer. This is a Raspberry Pi 4 running, um, maybe you can go to me full, full me, can you put, go to me full screen? Yeah. So now this is running, this is running Android, um, like whatever the latest is, Tiramisu or whatever. On a Raspberry Pi 4, this is a Lineage OS build, which is really easy. You just download the image, you burn it, and you run it. Um, and I've got it running Termax on here, and I swapped in that new .so file, the, the linked library that is now um, modern Android compatible, and I'm running SSHD on here. And then um, if you go back to the computer, What's nice is that now I can I can SSH and SCP in. So I'm SSHed into the Android. Uh, can do a uname all. So this is a Android uh, build from like 2020. It's, you know, I think it's, maybe it's Android 11 or Android 9 or something. Um, but I've got the Cloud Pets. Um, I guess I get status. Um, so, you know, I've, I've updated the uh, lib audio 32 encoder file um and now i can encode audio so this was the that way file that uh mr lee gave me of the song and i've converted it to a binary file and then i scp it off um and then i can paste it into the story file for the bear and it works so that's like way easier than to be honest dealing with um android phones you can do it on any android phone but it's kind of nice i just have like Ethernet plugged into my Raspberry Pi, a SSH in, and it's good to go. Um, so I'm still working out like different ways for, like at least now you can use any Raspberry Pi. You don't need a Pi two. You can use any Raspberry Pi that's modern to run Android on it, and you can run this script. Um, it is a scanned ARM. It's only ARM thirty two and ARM sixty four. But if you're on a Mac, a modern Mac, it is ARM sixty four compatible, and so you you can. I'm running Windows on an x86, but if I had a Mac laptop or a Mac computer, which I, I do have one, you can run the Android emulator um, within Android Studio and boot up a, um, like here I've got a, a, a virtual device. You can boot up a virtual device, so you could actually do this all within um, within software. But unfortunately, emulating the ARM core on an x86 it totally sucks. And he uses QEMU and it's not very fast and you can't run QEMU without like the whole Android um thing over Bob. So um so I should delete this because this totally didn't work out. I tried to like emulate a Pixel 2 and it like I was it like it didn't even it just crashed. It was like I can't do this. I'm giving up. I'm leaving. Um so I learned a lot. Um but we did get audio working. The only thing that's a little sad is the audio quality isn't as good. It's um 16 kilobit per second, not 32, because uh, that enco encoder was meant to do only Bluetooth low energy um, transmission, not uh, not drag and drop over USB. But it's a lot easier to, once you have something working, work your way back into getting better quality and like easier functionality. And so you can see I'm like sort of filling out this guide on like, okay, how I can um, make it much easier to do a conversion. Because once you have an easy way to do the conversion. And then I can look at this like G7221 codec thing because I might be able to um, figure out what tweaks they made to whatever table or whatnot um, to get it working. And then I can run like anything on any computer because it would just be um, a simple executable that just takes in the WAV file and it gives you like the highest quality audio out. So it's happening, but it's happening slowly. I'm kind of like redoing a ton of work. But the cool stuff is that there's 
I've seen so many people be like, oh, I wish I had an audio 32 encoder decoder. At least now there's going to be a documented way of doing it. And I think that'll be really cool. All right. So that's that's what's on my desk. It's like bears, all bears all the time. So let's go um, to the great search. Let's do the great search. Where in the world is that part I need? The Great Search with DigiKey. The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thank you, DigiKey. Every single week, Lady Data uses the power of engineering to help you. Yes, you find the things you are looking for, Lady Data. What is on the Great Search this week on DigiKey.com? Okay, so this week on the Great Search, we had a request, and I love requests, so send them in. Um, so Puppy2331 Puppy asks, uh, us to please find them an analog magnet sensor. So um, we've covered magnetometers before where you have I squared C or SPI output. Um, you know, I have a couple favorite ones like the TMAG series, I think. Um, I'll show it. This is an I squared C Hall effect 3D sensor so it can read uh, magnets, but it's digital output and it's surface mount. So um, I'm going to guess that this person wants a through-hole, easy-to-use analog output magnet sensor that is, um, because they said analog, I'm assuming they don't want just a switch. It's easy to do a switch where you just detect whether a magnet is nearby or not because it you know turns on and off a switch. Um, there's read relays that do it. Those are super inexpensive. They're mechanical. Um, there's Hall effect sensors that have digital output or open drain output, but they specifically said analog. So let's find a magnet sensor that will um, read north or south on a magnet and give you an analog voltage depending on how close it is, and that will be used for proximity sensing. So um, you know we're we're just gonna start by searching for magnetic sensors. And that is a whole category. Uh, so there's a couple of different categories um, available here. So we don't want switches. So there are solid state switches that are not mechanical. They're not reads. They're not read relays. They're not like a mechanical switch. Uh, they do use the Hall effect, but they have a switch output. So it's like digital output, even though it's not a digital protocol. We're not going to do that. There's also modules that are like fully enclosed. If you're building like a finished good or a robot or like some automation, you might want a ready to go, you know, enclosed uh, module. But we're going to go with um, a linear compass IC. Even if it's not 3D, um, they're kind of called compass ICs. Okay, so first up, um, we definitely, let's put back to stats. We can see all of our options. So many options. Um, so let's go with active. And uh, let's go with through hole. Remember, we wanted a through hole part for this person. And I want something that's in stock. And I'm going to exclude the marketplace products. So you can see, like, just before we even get into like our specs, it's already down to, you know, about 100 options. Um, okay. And then the output type. So remember, they wanted analog output. Um, so, you know, there's this dash. I don't know what that means. A Wheatstone bridge would mean that it's a it's a resistor, so you'd have to like do the Wheatstone bridge amplification. I, I want it something that doesn't require external circuitry. PWM, I'm assuming they don't want because PWM is hard to read because you have to read the pulse width. So I'm assuming they really do want analog uh, current or voltage. The reason I want to say current is because you can always put a resistor to create a voltage from the current. Um, so let's see how this goes. So. Let's apply. Okay, cool. Um, let's see what kind of, kind of options we've got here. So these are looking really good. There's these uh, through hole components. Um, let's next up do voltage. So they didn't specify a voltage. Uh, and they didn't specify a sensing range. Um, that is actually kind of important because depending on um, the, how strong your magnet is, um, you might want to either measure the earth magnetic field or a weak magnet. It could be like one of those kind of like fridge magnets, or it could be a really strong rare earth magnet. They didn't say, but let's do the voltage supply first. So I want it to work with three volts and five volts. That's kind of my preference. Um, so let's look. Uh, this is within range. And I'm just shift clicking to pick up all of these three to five volts and three to higher volts. Version. So now we're 
kind of cut our options in half. Uh, and then the next uh, question is um, the range, uh, the sensing range. Again, they didn't mention it, but I'm going to say, uh, you know, maybe plus minus 20 and above, so fairly strong. The, you know, you want to have it be, um, the range of your sensor should be matched to the magnet because you don't want it to saturate if it's too high. And you don't want to have the voltage kind of go up and down enough to be measurable by your microcontroller um, when it's low. So let's uh, let's look here. Okay, so we're down to 40. I feel like that's a good place to start. So let's look at pricing and see where we end up. So um, one thing I notice is that the kind of the front the front page of of you know when I search by price is all this DRV 50. 5x series and that's kind of promising um there's a lot of them in stock and they seem very popular and they're 50 cents a piece so let's look at one of these you know it looks like it's drv 5053 and then letter 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 so in the data sheet um analog bipolar hall effect sensor that sounds right linear output hall sensor uh looks like there's a bunch of different sensitivities available so it can be um as little as 11 millivolts per millitesla so that's good if you have a very strong magnet to 90 millivolts per millitesla that's if you have a very weak magnet um available in both surface mount SOT 23 and SOT uh to 92 so through hole see wide voltage range no regulator required um it's kind of nice and what's neat is uh, it's, it's stabilized. The analog, the zero to two volt analog output responds linearly to the applied magnetic flux density and distinguishes the polarity detection as well. So that's kind of nice. So you can detect whether it's north or south. A lot of Hall effect sensors will only detect one, like either it's south measuring or north measuring. It doesn't tell you which one. Um, what's nice about this is it looks like the output, which is two volts, so it's zero to two volts output. Um, it starts with the strongest north is up to two and as it goes down to the south side of the magnet it will um go down to v min which is probably around zero sounds like v min and it looks like there is oh you can get it in negative or positive polarity sensitivity and that they'll just be the opposite way so you, know, you can decide whether you want north to be positive or north to be negative uh north to be a high voltage or north to be a low voltage um let's see in vmin they don't actually say what vmin is but i bet it's just zero volts i think they're just saying like zero volt okay output voltage point um to point two volts to 1.8 volts so yeah it's about zero to two and at uh zero millitesla like so no magnetic field detected at all it's about one volt so you know sounds pretty good you can use this with uh three volt uh logic so your feather or your uh raspberry pi pico or you can use it with an arduino um you just won't get you know you just make sure you know that you have to divide your five volt range down um when you get the analog reading out you'll have to like kind of scale it down to get to the zero to two volt range but this looks pretty good and it's available in a lot of different sensitivities and looks pretty solid and it's really inexpensive so um this is going to be my pick for the great search and there's a ton in stock so you're in luck if you need it if you happen to need 7668 uh go to town great search And that's our show for this evening. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll be seeing everyone during the week and more. We've got that teddy bear at home. Or if you need to get one off eBay, get ready because it'll be a lot of fun stuff yeah. to do. Yeah, I'm slowly but surely writing this like massive guide. And we're also going to um, be experimenting with how to do digital puppetry to get the mouth to move as if it's singing. So it like looks yep. like it's doing the right thing. Although we've noticed that as long as it's moving while there's audio, it doesn't Fine. seem to, your brain kind of fills in the mess. Okay. Thanks everybody. Have a great night. Bye everybody.